Hi everyone, Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a new table runner and it's called a friendship braid. And Matt cut out some jelly rolls with these beautiful Kansas Troubles fabrics. And this is enough for us to make two runners. Since it's called a friendship braid, we're going to make one for a friend, keep one for ourselves. So let's go over to the workroom and get started. This is the perfect project to either sew with one of your friends or make two. Just make two. I have a lot of projects that I finish and I'm planning on giving them away and I think to myself, boy, I'd like to have one as well. So this is perfect. We're going to make two at a time. We have 12 medium to light Kansas Troubles prints here and then I've got four dark ones. I happen to pick out four of the navy ones from the Jelly Roll. The Jelly Roll has a lot more prints, but we only need 12 medium light and four dark. The only other fabric we need is a border fabric and a binding fabric. So we're going to need three strips at two and a half inches, and I cut my binding two and a half inches as well. So we're going to need three at two and a half of that. So that's a very, very easy cut. When we're all done, we will pick a backing. But for now, let's get started on the patchwork. I've picked out a medium and a light strip and all four of my dark accent strips. And we're going to take these and we're going to cut them all into two and a half inch squares. Then we're going to take the rest of the light prints and we're going to cut them into 10 inch lengths. That's all the cutting we have to do. I have all of the patches cut right here, and we only had a little teeny bit left of the scrap. Now we're going to cut the binding and the borders. So let's get them ironed up, then we can cut them very accurately. We're going to make a nine patch for the middle of the runner. So let me lay that out here. Let's see how we're going to do this. I'm going to use three different blues. I'm putting it on point right now because that's how it's going to look in the runner. So I think we'll put these in the far corners and these like this. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that up for the middle of the runner. I'm going to make two of them, one for each runner. So I'm going to sew these together and I like to keep the pieces with the strings between. So that's the first two pieces. Then I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to leave that on the machine. And this way I have less chance for getting my pieces out of order or mixed up. So we will leave those strung together. Here's where they came from. And we will open these all up and then we will sew the third piece right on here. So this will go here and we will just stitch all three on. The easiest way to make this lay flat to sew your rows together is to finger press the bottom row all to the right, then finger press the next row to the left and the top row to the right. So they're alternating the directions. Then when you go to sew these rows together, number one, they're, they're attached so you won't get them mixed up, but the seam allowances will nest and you can feel with your fingers if you've got them right in the right spot. It makes it really easy to match. Now we'll just sew this last row and the nine patch will be done. They're all stitched together. Now I want to iron them really flat. So I usually do it first without steam. Make sure everything is pulled out and is squared up. Once you have it looking good, then give it a lot of steam. I'm ready to start sewing 
these strips onto the center nine patch. So we're gonna take one of our 10 inch pieces and we're going to line up the edges and we're gonna stitch that on. Then we're gonna take another strip. I'm gonna use a different strip and it's going to go on the other side. But before we stitch it onto that side, we're going to stitch one of these onto that. Then we're gonna keep repeating the same thing till we have a whole row that way. Then we're gonna start on the other side. So let me show you how to do this. These two, just start with the matching and use a quarter inch seam and just stitch right down this edge. You can stitch all the way off so you're beyond that patchwork and then just curve over. I'm gonna finger press this open here. Now I'm gonna stitch one of these squares onto this strip. Then we will add it to the nine patch. Now I'm gonna to wanna to put this seam allowance that way because this seam allowance is that way. We want them to be opposite. So we're gonna put this seam allowance toward the strip and we're going to line up these top edges, line up this intersection and then stitch off. So this is gonna be easiest if I flip the whole thing over because then I can start at the beginning here. Now we're going to press this open. Now we're going to add another strip. I'm just picking these at random because my strips are all about the same value. And then we're gonna pick different print here. And we're going to have that guy there. So we're just gonna keep adding till we have five rows on the top. That's the last strip. So I'm finger pressing all of these with the seams going away from the middle. So look how nice that is looking. We will be trimming all of this excess off. So that's the first half. Now we're ready to start building this way. So I'm gonna make mine balanced. So whatever I started with here, I'm gonna put that piece here. So I'm going to line these edges up here and stitch down that way. Now when we sew this strip on, we've got some excess fabric here and that's okay. Just keep this lined up and just stitch to the end of it. I'm just gonna stitch right off. Now, we, we don't need any of this excess here. I don't want a lot of extra bulk, so I'm going to trim this off even with that seam allowance right now. Now we are going to add this color strip right here, but before we do, we're going to put the blue part there. So let's find this guy. You don't have to keep them in order like this. You can just do them random. I just think it looks nice and balanced like this. So I'm gonna sew this onto here. Then we're gonna sew this strip onto that edge. Again, finger press all of these seam allowances toward the strip. Now this is going to fit right here. So we are going to put this here. And I've been sewing this from the back side. It's gonna be a little tricky on this first one to flip it over because I won't know where the end is. So I think I'm just going to do this from this side. I'm just going to flatten it out and feed it down. You can use pins if you want. And I'm just gonna start sewing right here. That's the only strip that's a little bit hard to stitch on. So trim off this excess, finger press it open. Now for all the rest of the strips, it's just the same method we used on the first half. We're gonna do a plain strip, then we're gonna do a strip with a navy, with a navy block sewn right there. All of the pieces are stitched on here. It's looking really good. 
Now we're going to iron it nice and flat, then we'll trim off all of these edges. So to iron this, it's already pretty flat because I was finger pressing as I went. I like to smooth it out, make sure it feels like my seam allowances are going the right way. You know, sometimes you have to pick it up and put them the way they're supposed to go, but you can pretty much feel if they're going the correct direction. And do a lot of the smoothing along the grain. That'll make it lay flatter without stretching. Then start your ironing. So start in the middle, and I like to use no steam at first. Iron with the grain. And once you get it pretty flat, then you can start with the steam. Now we're going to trim off these edges. It's really easy if you measure from this middle line here. I'm going to be cutting it 12 inches wide. My ruler is 6 inches, so I'm just going to line up this edge right along the edge of all of those center blocks there. So put that right along all those intersections, and then we're just going to hold it and trim all of this off. Now I'm going to have to move because my ruler isn't going to reach the whole way. Line it up again. Very simple. Now I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. Now we're ready to add borders. Now is a good time to look and see if you actually liked the border print that you picked out. I'm going to use the red for borders. So I like to just take it and put it up against there and see if I still like it because I also have this green and it's exactly the same amount, the same number of strips. So sometimes I'll change my mind. Hmm. Still like the red border the best, but you could, you could switch it up. Now my runner is going to be pointed. So I'm just going to put the border on the sides, then I'm going to put it like this, and the border is going to be pointed. If you'd prefer to make it square, all you have to do is cut, cut a square along the diagonal. Anytime you're making something you want to fill in with a corner here, you can just estimate and cut it a little too big. So you can see I've got this cut a little bit bigger than I need. So if I was going to put these corners on to square it off, even though it's too big, it's okay. Just stitch it on like this with a quarter inch seam and you just slide this over so that that point is off a quarter inch. Stitch it on, open it up, and then just trim off the extra. This is a really easy runner to make longer. Just keep adding more braids on both ends. Or maybe you want to just add braids on one end and have this center up a little bit. If you want to make this into a quilt, you just make multiple rows, put a little border in between, and again, you could offset these guys. So maybe you want one up high and one down low. It's really a fun pattern to play around with, and you don't have to use whole strips. These can just be done with scraps because remember they were just 10 inches by two and a half inches, and then a lot of two and a half inch squares. Very easy to manipulate into lots of different sizes. To put the border on, I just need this a little bit beyond here, and I'm just going to stitch it using a quarter inch seam, and I'm gonna be really careful that I don't stretch this because it is on the bias. The whole edge is on the bias, but if you leave it on the bottom and put this right along the top, it tends to not stretch. So just lay it on there carefully and don't stretch the bottom. Now when you come to the bottom edge here, you can just stitch off. And you can just use scissors right now to cut this bottom edge. So it's going to be eventually cut with the blade here. So all I want to do is cut off the excess down here. So this will get finger pressed open. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I steam pressed these borders nice and flat 
And now I'm just going to line up my ruler along this here and cut off that excess border there. Now we're going to put a border here. So we're just gonna line up the top and stitch off of the far end. Now I'm going to finger press this away from the center. And then we're going to stitch this last one on here. And it's, we. I don't want that end because it's got the selvage. Turn it around. So we're going to want to start stitching here and work our way down. So I'm going to line it up, but then I'm going to flip the whole thing over and sew from this side. Now I just have to sew the borders onto the other end, iron it up, and trim this, and it's ready to be quilted. This was such a fun project. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Now I went ahead and did the red borders with the green binding, and it turned out about 15 inches wide and 42 inches long. And you can see how well it coordinates with all our other Kansas Troubles and Civil War sty style prints. I just used a pretty plain backing, and this was not done on the long arm. This was quilted on my straight machine. It's quilted in the ditch or near the ditch, and it was so much fun. Let me show you the, the one. This is for the friend. So this one, I traded it up. I did the green borders with the red binding. We can't actually decide which one we like better. We like them really well. So I know who this one's going to. This is going to my best friend, who happens to be my mother-in-law. So grab your fabrics, make some runners, give one to a friend. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the Friendship Braid Runners. We're having another giveaway. This is really fun. This is a clipboard set. This is from Moda. And I'll show you what it looks like. We're gonna give away 10 of these. If I could only get them open. So if you like to sketch when you do your quilting, you know I'm a big sketcher. We've got graph paper here, and we've got a measuring stick there. We've got some binder clips and some really, really cute pencils. So all of this, make it with Moda. I'm not easily distracted. Hey, look, fabric. So this is really fun. We're gonna give away 10 sets of these. So there'll be a link below for how you enter. It's really easy. Just put in your name and email address and we will ship these worldwide and you have 10 chances to win. Good luck. We're also giving away some of these on Instagram. If you didn't know we're on Instagram, we are. So you have five more chances to win. We'll have the instructions on how to enter there so you can enter both contests. Happy quilting.